there. Just say when. No when. Oh, okay. Hey guys! Uh, shit, how do I do this? I'm not used to doing the... <laughs> uh, welcome to Greg Tech. We'll be doing things and accomplishing stuff. Well done, production. Peter, well done, well done. I'm bad at this. <laughs> well I'm really bad at this. <laughs> hey guys, Jerry here, and let's just get started and ignore that ever happened. Oh, that's what I was trying to do. I was trying to do, hey guys, Buddha here. I was trying to think of it, and then I went blank. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So, Blast Furnace has finally started, you know, actually proving its worth for us. Um, in large part because of this little redstone system that I've implemented that we're actually going to start by going through. So, I made something called an energy <laughs> reader or energy detector, I think it was called. Uh, let me just... Energy detector. Yes, this is it. You need an EU EU reader from Industrial Craft, which is not too bad, and then you upgrade it and you get this thing. Which has an insane number of configurations. I think at the moment I have it to electricity storage maybe inverted. Not quite sure. Um but basically whenever the the low voltage battery buffer here is completely full, not only the batteries but also the block itself. It will send out a full powered redstone signal and not just these 910-ish that it's jumping between right now. When it does this, it gives a full signal. This piece of redstone up here will go to a 10 in power. And that means that the comparator will switch over because this one in the back here is only 9 because I placed a redstone torch sufficiently far back. So whenever th that one's down there full, this one switches around and the torch up there will light up, lighting a piece of redstone on top of this dropper, which will send a piece of aluminium dust into the hopper and into the thing. And I have made a little, shall we call it a manual uh, item pipe here, with um, macro blocks so stuff doesn't just fall out. Yay. So that's no waste. No waste, but exactly. And this thing, since I made it, has made about 40-something aluminium ingots, flawlessly. Every single time the energy has been full, it's made a new one. And, 43. Well, we had a couple in, in, in the first place. Oh. And I've used some as well. We'll say 40. So it's made 40-something, and it's working beautifully. I'm very happy about that. So thanks to the automatic system, I've been able to craft, or prepare the crafting of this thing here. The advanced electrolyzer. Which Yay. I just picked up because we need this thing. If Ow. we are to I need a wrench. Not going back down there. Um dangerous. Yeah. We need this thing um to uh, split up various stuff. Like we have a basic electrolyzer here over here somewhere and it does some it does the basic recipes. Uh like um sodium chloride and such. But if we are to actually split up ores we need the advanced one. And the ores that we would like to split up, among other things, are all of these. Um, especially the ones containing sili uh, silicon. So stuff like the, um, not the bauxite, but the, uh, where is it? Blah, blah, where? Can't find it, Buddha. What is it? The grossula ore, there it is. So calcium, aluminium, uh, silicon and oxygen. The oxygen sorts are not the big the big parts, but the um, the silicon and the aluminium are stuff that we we're kind of lagging on at the moment, especially the silicon because we actually don't have any whatsoever, um, and we need quite a bit to get starting on a computer. And you're yeah, making, we do. You're making appetite down here. Yes. We need more four chambers, don't we? Yes. <laughs> we I guess we could use an electric four chamber, but that would mean we need to make another anvil. There. All right. Um, while that's happening, let's just have a look around. So, another thing that's happened since last time is that I've actually listened to you guys once again. Uh, I still haven't renamed the tree farm because, well, that's my choice to rename it like that or name it like that. Plus, the we can't give faces to all the uh, the golems out here because one of them is already wearing a top hat. Yep, and that's not changing. That's not changing. No, he needs the top hat. But we have he is changed. Fabulous. We have changed the um, the dark oaks for rubber trees. 
So we needed a change in wood anyway. Yeah, we. I think total we have about twenty four thousand um, dark oak logs. So overall, you know, we're pretty good there. There you go. Your appetite should be done. That means I can get this stuff in. So down oh, here in the furnace room, we've turned off the high pressure boiler tank again because you know we burned through half a barrel of charcoal. Um, and instead, we have upgraded this thing. Massively. So, massively, exactly. It's about eight. It's eight times as big. <clears throat> Produce. Uh, I'm uses still not four times the, the fuel. And the cart is here. Yeah, I'm still not seeing it. Well, oh. then open your eyes. Look up to the skies and see. It's just a minecart. I don't know where I'm going with this. I don't know, I'm going this way. But, um, <laughs> yeah, we've basically, like, we had the creosote one cooking all the time and figured we, if we have enough creosote to actually, you know, power a big one, then we might as well get a big one cooking all the time. And then we but don't we have to... we didn't have enough. Well, we, so far we still have enough. Like, we're not emptying oh, yeah. out these ovens. Like, some of them are even turning off once in a while. We are not emptying them out. I know, but we didn't until now is what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, and we even have added an extra three. So we ha we're up to 12 now. Which, according to the beautiful math by Apkilada, should be enough to power the thing. But apparently nine so far is proving to be enough. Actually, they are draining a bit, but I don't want to uh, move these fluid loaders until they're actually starting to be really empty. Because, you know... 32 buckets times 3 that we would lose just moving them. Oh, there's only 3 fluid loaders? There are 6 in total. But we need to move 3 of them if we are to get the last 3 oh. cook ovens into the uh, the creosote system. Right. So so that's 96 buckets of creosote that I'm honestly not, not too fond of um, just breaking. Right. Again, it might not be a big issue, but... Um, that's an issue. As it is right now, I'm not fond of breaking them. Also this... You did some work in here. We also have done some work in here. Um, got glass protecting all of the animals now, so while you know animals oh, you are still dying, while animals are still dying, um, that's it. That happens because of um, too many animals in an uh, enclosed space will end up killing each other off because of you know nudging and pushing and farting in each other's faces. I think that's why, at least. You didn't follow my pattern. What? What dirt? The, yeah, dirt behind the glass. No, I used cobblestone behind the glass. And cobblestone in the corners as well. Rapid fire! <laughs> and suddenly chickens. There. Mm, what's the last thing, last change, last update? Across the bridge. <laughs> So down here, um, I have also started preparing our farmcraft area, you know, for a bit of an, an overall, like, a, it was a bit haphazard, just uh, squished on top of a couple of tiny hills and then whatnot before. So now we have a foundation, um, we even have a, an area that's sort of flattened out, ready for potentially building a farmcraft structure on. Um, potentially. Potentially. But then... Even if we don't do anything else, it looks very nice on the map now. <laughs> don't know if you noticed that. What? That the area down here looks very nice on the map now. Oh, yeah. It looks a little trippy. It looks like a dropper map. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Alright, so I think that's I just caught up to uh, what's happened since last. Well, that's... Them caught up. There's That's still something you up. haven't showed me. Oh, there is. There me. is still something I've te been teasing you about. Yeah, exactly. I just need to quickly uh, take this grossular ore and clean it. We need to get some of the uh, the machines that actually cleans up uh, dust and ores and such. Um, so if we have to electrolyze this, we need twenty of them. All right. Yeah, we can do that. Now I'm gonna steal the big battery from here. And just toss in here for now. And 20. There you go. All right. Now, Buddha, now you get to see what it's all about. So can so, I look in here now? You can look in there now. <gasps> Industrial. That is not as exciting as I thought it was going to be. 
Oh, but wait. So we take this industrial TNT and then we put it in again, along with a bit of string. Okay, it's the dynamite. Yoink. And then we take... Um, yeah, we, I and I don't have... right-click with these, right? Nope, you don't. You really don't. Um, take 16 of them and, and, and put it in a circle around these. Sticky dynamite. And then give me uh, half of the normal dynamite you have. Um, you should have a bit, bit of normal left. Yeah, I have a full stat as 16 of them. Yeah. Alright, so now I'm going to show you why this is amazing. So let's first go far away from our base. Shut the door in my face. Okay. So... Yeah, I think this would be this will, this will be a good spot to just illustrate. So um, before we do anything, uh, stamp behind you now. I put a piece of cobblestone. Put a piece of dynamite on top of that normal one. Uh, how do I do this? Just right click on the block, and then punch it and step back. Oh. Okay, so five by five. No, three by three. Three by three. Yeah, no, you just threw Sorry. a piece of dynamite on the floor. Did I? I didn't. Nope. Well, a piece of dynamite showed up for me at least. Well. But crazy. um so basically it blows up a three by three area. So right. the same as a normal piece of dynamite in stone. But it doesn't break any blocks. Rather it doesn't, you know, destroy them. It, it breaks them you so you can pick them, them up, but it doesn't destroy them. So oh, over here I have you know, just tested that the dynamite still works. Um. <laughs> yeah, I would say so. Ah, I've fallen so, and I can't get up. So basically, there are a couple of ways that you can use this dynamite. You can either, you know, the efficient way is sticking in two blocks like this and then putting a piece of dynamite in the back and then punching it. Oh, we did this on the uh, test server. I remember this. Okay. Yeah. So you can do this, this is a rather really easily, you know, of... of mining big things. So you can put one in and then put one in. So yeah, very efficient way of, you know, digging out areas. But there is another way you can do this as well. So if you come down here, I'll show. So the sticky dynamite, if you can guess what that does. I'm guessing you can throw it and do that. Exactly. It sticks to whatever surface you put it on. So if you have, if you can throw it inside a hole, um, you know, like use your wand or something to dig out a two block hole and then throw it up there. It nice. works wonderfully. It's so expensive though. It's not, really. It's really not expensive. Three pieces of dynamite, three pieces of um, uh, TNT, normal TNT, gives you 32 dynamite. That's basically the math, but the, again, Gunpowder is can be considered, you know, a, a sort of expensive resource. Um, unless you happen to be in a mod pack that actually allows for creeper spawners to exist. Oh, look at that. Aren't we in a mod pack where creeper spawners exist? Why, yes. Yes, we are. So all of a sudden, you know... That's, it doesn't seem that expensive, does it? I guess not. We just need to, you know, properly utilize the said creeper spawner. But you know, as a weight of emptying out these massive Greg Tech veins, this is really good. Yeah, this ain't bad. Like, I, I had uh, trouble actually finding out where the main vein was, because I had the tunnel over there digging, and it, it as we can see now, it was right, right at the very edge of it. Um, so I started just bombing around the place, and... Um, from the looks of it, now we've actually found, you know, something something pretty close to the center of the vein. I would say so, yeah. So there's a lot of aluminium dust here that's rather easy for us to get. And, you know, with the uh, sticky dynamite, we can even throw it up in the ceiling in case, you know, we end up digging too low and we discover that there's a lot above us. All I've got is sticky dynamite left, actually. You can also use that as no just like normal. Woo! Yeah! Like, you can use the sticky dynamite just like the normal one. Well, what's the point of making it sticky, then? Uh, well, it's basically free. 
it's just one piece of sticker resin for every age, so... Boop. It does seem to be glitching about a bit on the server, so um, the actual piece of TNT that you see ends up landing a bit after it's actually blown up. Like that. But yeah, again, in combination with the wands for digging out the holes and such, it's pretty damn good. <laughs> wands and holes, holes and wands. <clears throat> oh yeah, I just saw one of the glitches. Boom, boom! So yeah, mining. <laughs> well, I wouldn't call it mining. Blast mining, sure. They're. Floating. Well, this is a, this is actually closer to how mining goes uh, takes place in real life. Fair enough. So you know, it's perfectly in the spirit of Greg Tech. That it's it's adding realism, um, not for the sake of realism, but for the sake of you know immersive immersiveness and such. Immersiveness. Immersiveness. Immersive oh. immersivity. I don't know. I would not move. Ow. Sorry. He just exploded my bum. And he liked it, people. He really liked it. <laughs> Alright, so I'm out of TNT. Finally. I have four pieces left. Might as, well, might as well use them up, you know. Yeah. Besides, this is, you know, a type of ore that we're starting to really need. There you go, Jerry. Made you a hole. Also, the sticky thing, you can actually just toss it. Like, you don't even have to place it inside the hole, you just toss it inside the hole. There yeah. we are. Alright. So, yeah, mining. Blast mining. M mining can suddenly be fun again. <laughs> <laughs> Efficient mining. And this is actually an uh, this is actually a, an industrial craft thing, and not really a great tech. But it works. But it works just the same, and it works beautifully. So um, yeah, that's now something. Now we've got this. What? That's something that we need to focus on. We need to find a proper source of gunpowder. So we've we can got just... this one junction back here. <laughs> Perfectly carved junction. Yeah. Well, that makes it, you know, easier to find the left turn. Fair All enough. right, let, let's unload. So, we have a little chest up here for the ores. Cobble can go in here. And then we have, let's see, crushed ores go in there. Dusts go up here. And then I have a couple of shards and some Formcrest stuff as well. But yeah. That's fun. I hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> All right, let's see. The um, advanced electrolyzer has finished, so we got we got a bit of silicon dust and some uh, some calcium dust. What can I actually do with calcium? Calcium we can use to brew mineral water. No, that's for strong bones. We can make fertilizer with it as well. Calcite dust for um, refining iron and blast furnaces. Alright, it's not too useful. Mineral water, I guess, but the uh, silicon would be nice, so I'm gonna put some... Let's just add that here into the um, into the blast furnace. The, bla the blast furnace recipe for the silicon and um, aluminium uses the same amount of energy, so... It doesn't matter too much whether it puts a piece of silicon or put a piece of aluminium in there. <coughs> nice. Yeah, sorry. All right, all right. Involuntary hiccup. So we also have, um, yeah, the, the cutting machine has been making a ton of planks for us. I uh, even had to make a couple of wooden slabs. So we have that going for us at least. Um, Yay! We have oxygen gas now that we can potentially use for um, an arc furnace. Ooh! Basically, um, the electrolyzer produces um, oxygen from a, a bunch of the different stuff that it um, it cooks up. And um, you can use that oxygen in an arc furnace to basically melt down 
both machines and other things uh, like tool heads and such. Uh, you can do some of these in a normal furnace or an alloy smelter as well, but I think the arc furnace is... Um, I'll, I don't know if it's faster. It doesn't appear to be. Some of it's faster, at least. Some of the recipes are really fast. But... Um, yeah, I'm not quite sure exactly what the purpose of it is, it, whether you can, um, you know, refine stuff in it the same way as you can in a glass furnace, or whether it's really just for recycling stuff. Just looking through some of the 5,000 recipes here, and it looks as though it's a lot of it's re focused on recycling. Which is a bit, a bit of a shame. Galena dust into silver and lead nuggets. Uh, uses. Let's see here. So, Galena dust. You can either use an elect electrolyzer like we have now to split it up in, into the dust of lead and silver and sulfur in, by themselves. You can use a blast furnace, an electric blast furnace, if you provide it with oxygen. Um, then you can take one Galena dust and make nuggets out of it. But that takes a lot of power as well. So we can also direct the oxygen into our blast furnace. Which would allow us to make what exactly, apart from Galena? I'm not seeing... I'm not seeing much. Uses. Rod iron into steel and... Yeah, blast, blast furnace, iron ingot into, into steel ingot in a blast furnace. In 25 seconds, using 60,000 DU. I guess that's one option. Using um, making steel with it. How do you make shadow? Iron? Magnetite Ooh. dust into wrought iron. Shadow oh. iron. Shadow, shadow iron. iron's a uh, nether ore. Well, from what I can see here, it's uh, an alloy between iron and um, thomium. <laughs> It's also showing up as a uh, an end ore, it looks like. But yeah, oxygen can be used in a blast furnace to basically make steel. And that's pretty much it. Then you have the chemical reactor, of course, which has a couple of recipes involving it. And then the arc furnace, which uses it for absolutely everything. But again, the arc furnace seems to be a, a method of basically recycling every single Gretek item you could imagine. Splitting it up into, you know, ingots again, if, if you've made something out of it. So I'm not quite sure if that'll, you know, if that has any proper use for us at the moment. But it's something at least, you know. We need a universal pulverizer. Have you seen the recipe for that thing? Yes, I'm looking at it now, and I'm regretting saying that. Yeah. Just the recipe and the power requirements are bad, really bad. Voltage in 2048. Yeah. We do have that ridiculous battery we found at one point. Um, we would also blow everything up. These ones here are the zero point module voltage. 131,072. <laughs> but there is actually a machine that'll accept it, believe it or not. Yeah, we'd need a lot of transformers though to make it into anything useful. I know. Anyway, I think that's all we have for this time, so I hope you guys enjoyed, and we'll see you next time. Bye! Bye!